Well, I've you know had a chance to uh, uh, meet a lot of you that I didn't already know as, as have they, but uh, I am Ed St. Clair. Uh, I, we, we all three of us obviously uh, studied with Bill. Uh, uh, I taught at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte for 37 years and haven't been uh, in a classroom in the last seven years. So it's fun for me to see, is this like a bicycle? Well, I'll be able to remember how to do this after uh, seven years away. Uh, and this is uh, Bruce Haddox, who was at Simpson College uh, in Iowa for 37 years. And he also uh, not only was a... Uh, uh, a well-known professor there. He served many years as the academic dean at Simpson and two miserable years as the uh, acting president of, uh, of that. And he, uh, in which he learned he aspired to no higher office than uh, he went back to being dean. Yeah. I did tell him I would be a trustee if they wanted. <laughs> they didn't take yeah. me out of hey, right. uh, And just another thing about Bruce and I, uh, were there at the same time from uh, 1966 to 1969. And uh, this is Beth Newman, who came to study with Bill 20 years uh, later than uh, we did. So it, there's a, an entire generational gap there. So that may be interesting to see if we can pick up some things that, uh, uh, that Bill had changed over those uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, she taught for 12 years at uh, St. Mary's College at Notre Dame and has now matched that t at 12 years at the Baptist Seminary in Richmond, Virginia. And we're just going to go one, two, three, and then we're not going to have a, uh, a panel discussion. Uh, so we'll just, we're going to open it up and give everybody here who, ha you know, you can ask, if you hadn't studied with Bill and you want to ask questions, that's fine. And, uh, but what we'd really like for uh, for people who studied with Bill or, or had other uh, contacts with him to you know, tell some stories or memorable things about uh, your experience with Bill as a teacher. And one other introduction about, about the panel. I have consulted with both of my colleagues and uh, I've discovered that none of the three of us have any profound insights into Bill <laughs> as a teacher, where we can take this to another depth level. So it's going to be one of these odd things where those of you who studied with Bill already know pretty much exactly what we're, we're going to say, and uh, maybe it will be helpful to, to those of you who never actually took a, a course with him. Uh, maybe we will be, add, uh, be able to add something, but uh, please do not look for profound, deep uh, insights. I hope they do. Oh, <laughs> and find some. <laughs> if they find me, tell us, please. <laughs> um, the, um, and in short of, of having, a, you know, being able to make any uh, universal claims about a bill as a uh, teacher, or the, uh, what I'm going to do mainly is give, uh, just tell some stories about my personal encounter with Bill Petit as a teacher and the impact that that had on me. But I, I did think it was fair. I do want to uh, do this in two parts. One, the first one is very short. I would like to do an objective assessment of Bill Petit as a teacher. You don't right. uh, no, uh, <laughs> you do not put this on the board. But I'm going to do it uh, using the, uh, the metrics of uh, teacher evaluations. Uh, the, the kind you find in every American university and college uh, right now, and uh, this is this is a one to five scale. And Force I, objectives clear. Yeah, and I have I have in front of me uh, a such a document. Uh, this is a genuine, authentic, simulated uh, teacher uh, evaluation. Are you going to tell us whether one is five or five is five? No. You yes. Yeah. You hope the students get confused. <laughs> uh, Give you a three. First. One. First one is: Did the did the instructor distribute a detailed syllabus on the first day of class? <laughs> well, and the answer to that was uh, never in any graduate seminar uh, that I took. Never was a detailed syllabus. In fact, there was never ever a single 
uh, syllabus that I saw. And one of the things that struck me the most when we were looking in the, ca uh, the glass cases at some samples from the archives, there was an old, typed, uh, on, on old paper, the syllabus that he used in what was called CC16, Christianity and Culture, when he taught at the Divinity School. And I could only see the top page, but it was incredibly detailed and, I, and it's very and I just kind of chuckled and said well I've, I've now seen a syllabus and I'll bet you that was the last one uh, that he uh, that he ever made so uh, it doesn't go to zero B uh, Bill gets a one uh, <laughs> did the instructor clearly lay out the objectives of the course <laughs> not only did he never do it clearly uh, <laughs> He never said what the objectives were, and I'm not sure there were. And I remember one episode in a seminar. It was a, it was a fairly big one, so there were some students in there that I, I really didn't know. And it was, we were well into the semester, and I remember the student, out of frustration, uh, raised his hand and said to Bill, does this seminar have a point? <laughs> and Bill, as only he could do it, looked at him, and he started breaking out in a little smile, and he got, you know, not the full face smile, but half of it, and he said, I didn't know seminars were supposed to have points, <laughs> and then the face went up and then just totally lit up, and then he went back and just went right off, and that was uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the end of it. Uh, he gets a one. <laughs> uh, did the instructor give clear explanation, explanations of the material at each class meeting? Well, I'll speed this up. No. <laughs> Did this instructor stay on task and avoid digressions and extraneous uh, information? Well, I don't know the answer to that. I do not know the answer to that question because I could never tell the difference. <laughs> he may have. <laughs> so we'll give him a three, a uh, generous three. Uh-huh, right. And uh, I'll just do one more and quit. Uh, five, were the assignments always clear? And the an he gets a one on, on that. I mean, they, they, they were never uh, clear. Uh, it wasn't like he said for the, I never heard him say, we knew what book we were reading, but I never heard him say, for next time we're going we're gonna to uh, cover pages 43 to 62, and I want somebody to do a little preparation. It was just, eh, wherever you are in the book, uh, uh, that will That's be good. fine. So he gets a one there, and since he got a three, that gives him a 1.45 uh, on teach. And so objectively, Bill was a lousy teacher. In fact, uh, he probably wouldn't have gotten tenure uh, in the modern university where you use these kinds of, uh, of, uh, of objectives. Now, now for the... Uh, uh, now for the... Uh, uh, just the, my, my personal uh, responses. I do have one distinction. Uh, that qualifies me to talk about Bill because the distinction I have is I am the second least prepared graduate student that Bill ever had in his entire career. Who's the first? I will not say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, I, no. I don't want to embarrass anybody. Uh, uh, through my college career, I, uh, I, everybody squirming. Could you say something? Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? <laughs> uh, in my college career, uh, I took mostly courses in science and math. And math. I did have a, and I, uh, I had a knack for mathematics, and I had a knack for analysis, and that's what I was interested in. And I could, I could do well and all of that, so I took courses in uh, biology and chemistry and lots and lots of courses in physics and lots and lots of courses in mathematics. And the, the point here is what I didn't take. I never took a course in history. I never took a course in philosophy. I never took a course in music. I never took a course in art history. Uh, 
art criticism, never took a course in literature, and I never took a course in literary theory or anything like that. All the very things that Bill had immersed himself in his education, going back at least to Oberlin, and given the family that he came from, I assume all the way back to when he first learned to speak. I, I assume that that was just a, a, a part of his, his family life. So those things that Bill had immersed himself in, I had, but uh, I did have, there was a requirement, you had to take two humanities courses. So I waited till the uh, end of my junior year and I took a course on Jesus, thinking, uh, you know, I've got to take a humanities course. I've known Jesus all my life. Uh, this will be a, a very uh, a good way uh, to do this. Then I went into that course and discovered that course was not about the Jesus uh, that I had lived with uh, all of my life. But the irony is I loved that course because it was so analytical and technical. We spent the whole time, uh, weeks, going through the synoptic problem. Then we went to all the issues about uh, Q. And uh, then we did redaction uh, criticism and ended up with uh, uh, demythologizing. With, and so I did well. I mean, that, that was just all taking apart and, and uh, analyzing. So it was a no-brainer for me uh, what to do for my second humanities course. I took a course in uh, Hebrew Bible. And again, I liked that course because the course in, consisted of deconstructing the Hebrew Bible, uh, particularly using the uh, JEPD uh, theories. And I got so into that that I literally took an old Bible that I had and got some colored pencils. And I went through the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus, marking in different colors so that when I would read, Genesis and Exodus, where we spent most of our time, I would always know whether I was reading the priestly source or the Elois source or uh, the Yahweh source. The other strange thing that happened was I, I, I knew I wanted to be, the one thing I did know was I wanted to be an academic. And then I discovered, well, no, I, my analytical skills kind of work here. And so I think it would be more interesting to teach Bible or religion than to teach physics or math. So I made a big change uh, in my life. But I realized that in order to get in graduate school at that mm -hmm. time, you, there were some exceptions, but you pretty much had to go to, to uh, seminary. And so I, I did uh, increase my education a little bit in seminary. But again, it was a very liberal seminary at that time, and it was still all, all geared around uh, a lot of analysis and uh, pro uh, liberal Protestant uh, theology. And so come on in. Uh, what seminary was that? Huh? What seminary? What, what seminary? Oh, what seminary? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, Southeastern Baptist oh. Theological, which at the time was the most uh, mm -hmm. uh, liberal of the, of the Baptist. Uh, you know, they've all gone to hell now. I mean, that's just uh, it's a sad story. He had, but he did confess to me one time that he was going to major in mathematics because there was so little to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, to memorize, yeah, uh, uh, particularly. So when I, so I applied to Duke and was accepted. <clears throat> and then when people heard, a, a classmate of mine that, that I, I sort of knew was excited, and he came to me and congratulated me on, on going to Duke, and he said, I recently heard, went to a lecture, and uh, a professor at Duke named uh, William Petit gave the lecture, and you've got to go study with him when you go because he is a genius. And here's a chance for, and he used that word, a and he'd only heard him give that one lecture. And I said, well, that's great because I was clueless uh, about all that. And asked, well, what did he talk about? And he said, well, it was rather complicated, but I think his main point was <laughs> that your skin holds your body together. <laughs> thought to myself, genius, and he knows that, what more do I need? I'm going to go study uh, 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 on that. And, but I also did go to uh, one of my professors there, uh, George Shriver, who had studied church history at Duke. Now, he didn't study with Bill, but he had studied uh, church history there. 
and talked to him about it, and he instantly said the same thing, used the same word. Said, "You absolutely." He didn't say you had to stay, but you absolutely must take courses with Bill. He called him Bill Petit uh, because he's a genius. And I said, "Wow, this this is uh, great." So when I got there, uh, it was just really cl clear to me, based on those two <laughs> flimsy things, that I would study with Bill. But as a a fluke of scheduling and something else I needed for my minor, I had a conflict. So I didn't take a course with Bill the first semester when he was teaching a seminar on existentialism. But uh, uh, Bruce and uh, Ben and uh, Milton uh, uh, were, were Dale. there, Dale, and Dale was in there. And, uh, but I would talk to these guys and I was hearing all that was going on and they were really struggling, trying to put all that together in the first class, and in ways that they were not struggling about what was going on in any of their other classes. But I didn't get uh, too nervous about it because, well, fine, you know, I'll get there and, and I'll, I'll be able to uh, uh, to do something. So it was only in the, my second semester there that I took a course, and I had talked to Bill off and on, but they were casual and quick. So I went in that first day to my first seminar, which was on religious language. And Bill came in and sat down, and I, right away I was just struck by his uh, physical presence, and again, that, that the twinkling eyes and the full-face smile, and then out comes this voice. <laughs> and his first thing that he said was, uh, I just want you to know that uh, this course is a total misnomer. I called it uh, uh, re religious language, when I first did it, but after teaching it once, I came to realize there is absolutely no such thing as religious language, <laughs> as a separate language uh, with its own lang uh, language, but it's just too difficult to go through all that bureaucracy of the <laughs> curriculum committee to change the name, so I just want you all to know this course is not about religious language at all, which, but then he went on, and I, I can't remember, I, I was, this was all 40-some uh, uh, years ago, uh, no, really can't remember, but but I was awestruck. I mean, I just I did not know quite what to make of it. I'd never experienced anything like that, and all the thing about genius came back to me, and the way I and I do not I, mean, I do not know, and there is no way for me to know whether Bill Petit was a genius or not, but I certainly experienced it then that he had a genius. He had a genius for speaking and it was like the words were just pouring out and I imagine a human can't quite talk like that and do that there has to be a little genie in there uh, <laughs> pumping away and bubbling and and helping him out with uh, with all all of those uh, words and I never will forget that uh, uh, when it uh, when it ended uh, Milton Scarborough waited out in the hall from me, for me and stopped me and he said, what did you think? What did you think? And I was just so strong. I was, I was really inarticulate. I couldn't say hard. I could say hardly anything uh, to him other than just how awesome that was. But, but I couldn't say anything other than that very intelligent. Well, the, the, you know, the class went on. Uh, I quickly became puzzled uh, by, a, by a lot of things, uh, and oddly enough, uh, if it was a course about, he, I, I got it about it, wasn't, there's no such thing as religious language, but I couldn't quite figure out exactly what it had to do with religion, at least the way I had thought about religion up until that time. But one of the things that was extremely helpful, and I give Bill credit for this with his students, he creates an atmosphere of convivial support. It's not like other horror stories I've heard where it's a competition among uh, graduate students to see who can win the most favor uh, with the professor. I mean, he really encouraged the, the uh, convivial uh, support. And uh, 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 Bruce and, and, and Ben and uh, Milton were in there. But I knew Dale had been around. <laughs> uh, longer. Uh, you'd, you'd studied him. That was not your first year uh, there studying with, you know, with Bill. 
So when Bill passed out, one of the readings was uh, myth, stories, history, eschatology, and, and, some, and some other things. And I read that. I understood every word. I, there were paragraphs I understood, but then there were other paragraphs I did not understand. And again, a part of it was just like the, uh, I'm going to sound like Fred Herzog now, what's this got to do uh, with religion? And what's it got to do, you know, what's it got to do with God? So I, the ones I put in questions, Mark, and uh, Dale had always been friendly with him. I knew he had studied ahead of the court. So I went to Dale and told him my problems. And uh, Dale, being the very gracious, convivial person that he is, uh, said, fine. And we went into the library. And all the paragraphs, he went, you, I don't know if you remember this. Or, I, I, some of coming back. Yeah. Cheap, I, I went through, <laughs> par, not, not paragraph by paragraph, but every paragraph I had a He would read them, and he would start talking me through that with some kind of uh, ex uh, <coughs> uh, explanation or, or uh, that helped that, that really helped me a lot to give me a little bit more comfort and like no here's what I should be thinking about uh, when uh, going through bill just a brief comment I, I didn't want to yeah no I'm fine but, but uh, I didn't feel I was the only one doing May have been partly on my instigation that other people did it to me uh -huh. the previous year, but, but uh, there, there was a lot of that going on. Uh -huh. well, well, that's good. Uh, so it wasn't just between the right. indigenous student yeah. and right. and Poteet, but right. we call that remedial religion. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 yeah, our religion in a way, or thinking, uh, studying religion, think about it in ways that I, I just had never uh, uh, thought about. Uh, uh, the semester, second semester, things got uh, uh, better. The uh, and then uh, also that second semester, I and a bunch took a uh, t did a tutorial with him at his, his house. And I, I think for a lot of people, things start coming together uh, when you do that uh, tutorial. Plus, we read Marjorie Greene's *The Knower and the Known*, which put things in a wider context. That because of the uh, uh, narrowness of my college education uh, helped me a lot because she put it in that wide context of uh, Arist you know, Plato, Aristotle, uh, Descartes, uh, and uh, uh, so on. Uh, the so it was in that that. It was only in that second, not that I fully got it. I, mean, I, I would never claim that to this day. But uh, you get what you, I mean, it's, it's, it was, it's for each of us as individuals. You get what you get, and you take it up, and you do with it what you, uh, uh, what you do with it. But I had realized earlier, because I'd read some of his older essays, Bill always, uh, basically always writes in the first person singular. I mean, that's obvious. Uh, but it took me quite a while to realize that he taught in the first person, singular. <clears throat> and I don't mean by that that he used I a lot or an expression that he would use. You know, it would be like saying that I, William H. Poteet, would. Um, but rather, he also, uh, not only the grammar, but he taught in the first person, singular, because he was always putting himself as a person out there and the thought. Some of it, you know, I'm sure was out of his repertoire from previous teaching. But then other times it was real clear uh, he was thinking through something. And that, that's when, uh, you know, I began to, to see that it wasn't about mastering uh, Michael Polanyi. It wasn't mastering Ellie uh, Merlo Ponty, and it wasn't uh, mastering what Bill was doing with those texts uh, either. That is, that was that was what he was doing, and but he was always uh, directing that back towards us and to re uh, reflect it. Now, just a uh, a quick thing. Because uh, Dale had the question about what a typical, typical seminar was, and I assume for all of you who took him, it was the same. Uh, <coughs> he never gave an assignment. <coughs> Excuse me. 
a, di a direct assignment. But wherever we were in the book we were reading, somewhere in there, a student was, uh, was assigned to uh, make a presentation, write something, and present it. And that was a real mixed bag. Uh, sometimes you would get, you know, a, a fairly whatever a section of the text they had decided to write. could just be a simple uh, exp uh, exposition of that text. Sometimes it could be torturous expositions that were much more complicated than the material that was uh, under exposition. Uh, most of the time, people tried to make a point. Uh, uh, and that would get Bill started. But the trick in all of that, once you did, it was the most... Uh, it was very unreliable to know what was going to happen. You did it, and he may take up your point and start engaging you in the conversation, trying to open up other facets or show uh, difficulties. Other times he would totally ignore your point and pick up on one sentence that you had in there. It was just in there sort of as a throwaway sentence or an exp a way you, you turned a phrase or how you had used uh, the language. And in all the seminars I took, it didn't matter how good or how bad a, a paper was to get it started. Bill could always make something out of it. Or if he chose to ignore it, he would make a nice rhetorical move to make it look like he was taking up something in the paper where he, he really wanted to, uh, to get at, uh, at something else. Well, I've, uh, uh, well, I'll just say uh, one more thing. Uh, and then I have some other things that in the conversation I can just add them in myself. And it's about the impact on my teaching. Uh, when I went to UNC Charlotte, I was, it was, we were a, a young school, <clears throat> went into a philosophy and religion department, and I was the first person hired uh, in religious studies. I was the first religious studies person uh, uh, to be hired by Loy H. Witherspoon, uh, the uh, Loy H. Witherspoon lectures uh, that Bill gave. So I had enormous freedom to do what I wanted to do. It wasn't like okay, uh, Professor Jones has this, and you can't teach that, and, and so on. So I had that incredible advantage of trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my teaching and, uh, uh, and, and do it. I did, uh, I did teach Polanyi and Poteet for a couple of years. I used a tacit dimension, <clears throat> and I particularly like using... Um, uh, persons and places, because that essay, from, that was from religious language too, or at that time, and that had enormous impact on me, uh, but it took, it took months for that impact to, to get through, and I used the myth story eschatology. What level, <clears throat> what level would that be as students? Uh, uh, at, when I first came, we, uh, it was strictly undergraduate students. Uh, we had some very good, uh, you know, we had we were teaching everything from freshmen uh, on a, a gen ed course to uh, some very good students in upper level courses that were run like seminar. It was only much, much later that we developed a master's program uh, there. That was at the la latter part of uh, uh, my. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, but uh, especially if if they were in, a, especially if they were in an upper level course. But I taught those things. But after a couple of years, I never used. Uh, it's sort of like what uh, Ben said, he never used them. I, I used them for a couple of years. But after a couple of years, I felt like I was comfortable enough with thinking in certain ways. And uh, <clears throat> that had changed for me beyond, uh, I, you know, I still, you still do analysis. Uh, you still do critical stuff. Uh, but but the, the important thing was thinking in a way uh, and teaching in a way that I never would have done if I had not studied uh, uh, with Bill uh, uh, Petit, and he had a, uh, can, you, can you name one example of what you mean by teaching in this way? Um, well, the uh, <clears throat> well, some of it is, is uh, you know, is uh, pedagogical, I guess. <clears throat> 
I, I really liked working with stories and, and the concept of stories and myth. <clears throat> so when I taught, I told lots of stories uh, so that what I was doing was mimicking what I was trying to, was uh, reduplicating what I was trying to get. And so I told lots of stories. I had students tell stories. Uh, I would ask them about what, uh, I'd always have to preface it. I, I, first time I did, I said, uh, what story has most influenced your life? And then I finally had to say, uh, what non-biblical story <laughs> has both, uh, you know, what story where Jesus is not the main character, uh, you know. It took a while, you know, it took me, uh, it took me years to learn how uh, uh, to teach well. And, uh, but I, I began to uh, sort of uh, appropriate and embody Bill and Polanyi in ways that I could manage through my, and then I could move on to other texts and that I would bring them there, and they would be at work, but I would not, and, and, and later in my teaching, I hardly ever mentioned the word Polanyi, hardly ever mentioned uh, the word Petit, but especially Bill, uh, Bill's influence was there to the very last seminar I taught, uh, my very last seminar, was on Nietzsche, and I don't know what Bill would have thought that I, I ended my teaching career uh, with the seminar, but uh, his influence was at work there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I tended to focus on very limited readings, uh, not a whole lot of books. Uh, I didn't know the term then, but I just had developed the practice of slow reading. And if you, I found that if you gave students manage, if you didn't do a pretense of uh, read this book for next time, and they would, if, if they, you were lucky, they would skim it, and we'd go in and play the charade like they had, you know, dug into it. Uh, uh, I, they really, they would rise to the occasion uh, when they weren't just overwhelmed with the uh, number of pages. I would try to start every class by creating, uh, uh, with a question. Uh, and I would, or some, something that tried to, to puzzle them. And, uh, and I'll just uh, mention Sam at this point. One of the things that developed later in my teaching that was uh, 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 Sam taught at the uh, uh, University of North Carolina. I think we're the only institution here that has uh, 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 two participants. Uh, he had studied uh, Plodgy at Iowa and was in the English department. Um, and uh, he uh, was really active with the faculty uh, trying to uh, teach ways that you can incorporate writing, short writings, uh, it was under the rubric of writing to learn. And so I started using, uh, for, with Sam's help, uh, short, have them write something. And that, that made them make a commitment to something, and that would help the dialogue. I don't know if that's, that's enough. <laughs>